Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the director, real? Quick. Len Len Kabazinski is he's a visionary genius of of schlock movies. Uh, he's a personal inspiration and hero of mine. Yeah. And and he's a martial arts master, and he makes horror movies with his friends. And we watch them. And we watch them, and we we love them. There he there is! is. Yay! Yes. Happy the, birthday, Len! <laughs> the master of cinema. I'd say that was rough as time. You been here before? No. It's just saying. None of us have been here, right? I don't oh my maybe God. maybe if a plane goes by, you should do a second take. <laughs> How about you get some wides? In a hurry, Karen. Oh my god, I feel claustrophobic. <laughs> and, and dizzy. You're in the woods and you feel claustrophobic. And dizzy. Oh. His films are just terrible. They, they are just <laughs> terrible. Um, yeah, they, they, they are amazing and, and I cannot wait to watch this. We've been waiting almost a year for this yeah. to come out on DVD. Um, so, I hope it doesn't disappoint. We'll or see. rather, I hope it does. I said stay back! <laughs> There's the lady. Yeah. So the last movie we watched tonight was uh, Skull Forest, which I know was highly anticipated by all of us. Uh, but Jack, why were we so looking forward to seeing Skull Forest? Len Kabazinski, the creator of Skull Forest, visionary, visionary, director, producer, writer. Yes. Um, he actually might have a, a greater place in our history than we might know. He, before we started doing the show, we would just get together and watch movies. Uh, bad movies. Bad movies, yeah. sure. But, you know, just get together and watch bad movies and laugh. One of the very first movies that we watched as a group, just for fun, was Curse of the Wolf. <laughs> It's the curse of the wolf. Yeah, that was our intro. That was our introduction to Len Kabazinski, uh, and and we kind of grew fascinated with him, right? Yeah, Curse of the Wolf was discovered on a like a, one of those four movie horror packs, and I think I was just going through them like one after the other, and then Curse of the Wolf came on, and it's like, hey, come look at this. <laughs> We all gathered in the room. We all gathered in the, in the room, yeah, and we're like, wow, this is... This, this is, is bad. This is bad. <laughs> and, um... Maybe I could use your help. Uh, but what is the charm of these Len Kabazinski movies? There's so many charms. I, I'll, I'm going to put this out there. Not only are his movies utterly incompetent, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem to get any better. No, <laughs> he no. Gets, he gets worse in different ways. <laughs> That's like, the most fascinating part, yeah. Like, like, like... Swamp Swamp Zombies, his first one, it's like an origin tale of bad. <laughs> Swamp Zombies starts off semi competent. <laughs> and then falls apart as the movie goes along. by the end of the movie, it turns into a Len Kabazinski movie. <laughs> where There's a normal zombie movie, and then at the end they're doing their MMA martial arts with yeah. guys in suits. Well, let's 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 who who is who is Len Kabazinski? I I would well, love to know. Uh, he might be a guy that works at PetSmart. <laughs> <laughs> According to the last film, we don't know much about Len Kabazinski. But, but what are what are the things you see in his movies? What are his interests? Okay, Len Kabazinski is a guy uh, he, who's into martial arts, who thought he could make a movie at one point. And, and did make a movie which, which had people kicking and punching each other and had <laughs> awkward boobs and nudity in it. And then he got distribution for his film because it was called, you know, Boobs in the Woods or whatever. And then he continued to make films. And, and one after the other, they're just amazing, amazing train wrecks. But there's an evolution too, which is the amazing thing. Like, like 
Fist of the Vampires when he starts doing like the green screen, everything's green screen and And then the one after that, that's when you get like the the bullets, the the CGI. Oh, the bl plug-in the, the blood, plug effects. blood effects. Yeah. And then you get to Skull Forest, and then he's doing this Dutch angle shaky cam. Thing. Yeah. He seems to see things in movies and try to recreate them to disastrous. W effect. Without without having any knowledge or or even a want to gain knowledge of the meaning of, of like the Dutch angle in Skull Forest. Every single shot was off kilter. Yeah. So off kilter that at one point we got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, I think we all just started leaning. Just lean a little bit and then it looks okay. Dude. What the fuck? I, here's what I ask. Here's the bare minimum of someone who is holding a camera. Mm -hmm. The thing that you want the audience to pay attention to has to be in focus. <laughs> That's it. Like, bare minimum. <laughs> Why would they have invented autofocus if they don't expect you to use it? Never Come on! Ever. Well, things are in focus. They just happen to be in the background. <laughs> There's fighting, there's shooting, there's uh, uh, action, there's excitement, there's shaky cam, uh, rinse, repeat. It's, it's incredibly boring, but you're constantly wondering why he won't just step a few feet away from his actors. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Well, I Look think at that. We can all agree to 50. Look at how wide right. that shot is. Yeah. Great. That's, was Somebody lovely. else was shooting it because he's oh, on yeah. camera. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yes. <laughs> Lens in the scene, he can't shoot it. Someone so. was like, wait, this this oh, is wrong. Yeah, this scene is not Dutch angle, and it's wide enough where you can see more than one person. Uh, Len used a lot of stock elements. Oh yeah, there's stock footage in this okay. movie. Which is fine, perfectly acceptable. A lot of people use stock elements like that. One of the stock elements he used was a moon. Slowly, oh, yes. <laughs> the moon slowly rising. The only problem was it was a different size or a different aspect ratio to his editing timeline. Yeah. And so there are little black bars on the top and bottom. Usually, you just take that image and stretch it out so it fits your timeline. That sounds like a lot of work. It's really not, in fact. You just change one number. That sounds like a lot of work. No, you just you click one number and have to type it a little bit bigger. Um, uh, if you're going to use stock footage, put in the right aspect ratio. Uh, <laughs> but also, another question is, what does aspect ratio mean? <laughs> he probably didn't notice it on his monitor. That's true, he probably blended in. Well, we can all agree that Len Kabazinski is an astounding and amazing filmmaker. Does he and his film Skull Forest make the best of the worst. If we're going by most genuinely entertaining, I'm gonna go with Trick or Treat. Oh. That was the one that I, that was the least, because we always say best, uh, uh, most entertaining for whatever reason. Right. And, and Trick or Treat was that for me. Skull Forest has its own charm because it's Len Kabazinski and we all love Len. Um, but uh, I, I really liked Trick or Treat, and I will probably watch that again in future Halloween seasons. Well, well, uh, Night Beast is terrible. So that, in my, in my opinion, that gets the axe. Yes, That's I agree. dead last. Yeah. What's your vote for best oh, of the Oh, God. Worst? Well, Trick or Treat, okay? The first half is really good, but the second half is it was really bad. But it's not, not, not an, but it's, it's But it's not entertaining bad at all. It's f just, oh, I'm watching now. This used to be good. Do you remember when this was good? Oh, and car drove off the bridge. It's over now. <laughs> but Skull Forest, I was, I was entertained the whole way through. Okay. So I'm going Skull Forest. Trick or Treat was really charming, and I agree. I want to watch Trick or Treat again. Um, uh, but there were too many moments where I was passively just sitting and watching, whereas anytime you watch a Len Kabazinski movie... You're like... You are struggling with every fiber of your brain to understand what is happening. 
in, in, a, in a bewildering fashion that cannot be matched by any other filmmaker. Skull Forest is the best of the worst. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, Rich, it's time for another best of the worst. What do you think we should watch this week? Well, previously we had a lot of fun watching Skull Forest. Well, Swamp, Swamp Zombies, this first one, it's like an origin tale of bad. <laughs> Swamp Zombies starts off semi-competent. And, and it falls apart as the movie goes along. Suddenly, by the end of the movie, it turns into a Len Kabazinski movie. <laughs> so today, I think we should watch another Len Kabazinski movie, Curse of the Wolf. What is Curse of the Wolf about? Well, I don't know. Let's read the back of the box and find out more about this turd. Mm. When the moon is full... Dakota has finally found a way to control her lycanthropic metamorphosis and desires to live a normal life. She attempts to flee the city and hide away from the pack, but the pack doesn't want her to leave, and they aggressively seek out Dakota. Enlisting the aid of a shady nightclub owner, uh, Rich? Not now, Jay, I'm trying to read the back of the box. Dakota must combat her past in a... What's up? I'm Len Kabasinski. Oh my god! My face! Ah! 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 My face! That hurts so much! Hi, Len. How are you doing? Mike, fine. How are you? I am great today. And you know why? Why is that? Because today we're watching ninja movies. But the problem is we have nine of them. Mike, we should watch all nine. I love ninja movies. <laughs> I'd love to watch all nine, but I'm afraid we don't have time for that. However, we do have a brand new gimmick to pick just three. Tell me more, Mike. Now, since we've thrown the wheel of the worst in the dumpster, we've created a new torture device to help select three films at random. It's called the Choose and Lose. All you do is select which face you want to punch through to reveal what tape is behind it. Now, since we have nine films and only five of us, we've covered the remaining four holes with some of history's greatest monsters. Now, Len, which face do you want to punch the most? The aerobics instructor, she gets uh, attacked by this ninja and then possessed by this ninja, but the possession comes and goes. Like she blacks out, and that's when she turns into the ninja. But she goes to the police station to say, hey, I was attacked by a ninja, which I think we've all been there. And, and this guy comes up, and he leans on the desk, and he just like stares and smiles, and it's like the creepiest thing. That guy is creepy. <laughs> He's just staring! Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. And then it turns out that he's the romantic lead of the movie. I'll help you, sweetheart. All right. Oh no! Uh, oh, uh, no. Uh, she pulls her face away. All his hairs on her face. <laughs> Who thought it was good, though? Somebody somewhere in the producing or writing or directing said this lead. He's got charisma. He has he got that like it factor. Rapist. He's degenerate. He, he's inconsiderate. Yep. And, and he doesn't do his job. And, just, and he sucks at being a cop. Yeah. And there's a, uh, after one day of aerobics, uh, oh, she no. goes out back out the back alley of the, the gym, and there's a woman being accosted by some thugs. Mm. So she goes up to him and says, hey, stop attacking that lady. Mm -hmm. So then they attack her. Mm -hmm. And then a crowd forms and just watches this attempted rape happen. With the cop in the crowd. And the cop is in the crowd. Because he just... he's been stalking her. <laughs> you know where the real talent of the movie is? Whoever made that spinning dummy. Oh, Billy, help me. <laughs> So she comes out of the shower, and again, this is a translation thing where you go, who, who made this? Is this supposed to be funny? She comes out of the shower, and she's just, uh, like seducing him, and she opens a can of V8 and dumps it on... Well, he had the V8, and I think she took oh, it from him. Oh, he had the V8, and she pours V8 on her body, and then he starts licking it off, like whipped cream or something yeah. along that line. And uh, what? Oh, no! 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 <laughs> There's nothing more wrong than V8. V8? <laughs> right, V8. Rich Evans. <laughs> Rich Evans, what is Ninja Warriors all about? Ninja Warriors is a movie that should have been called Seven Ninjas. <laughs> because because when the movie starts off, they're they're very careful to show you that there are always seven ninjas doing something. They don't, very careful. They don't take any shortcuts when they when they crawl out of the ground. It's seven, one after the other. 
Now, the, I remember a plot about secret documents in a folder okay, marked top yeah, secret. Yeah. There is a the the explicitly marked top secret in humongous, bold yes. font. There was an old grandpa who was like a cab driver yeah, or a pizza maker. <laughs> He looked like your barber or somebody. He was the scientist who was making a secret formula, yes. and Ninja stole the secret formula, and somebody wanted it back, so that the, the old guy wanted it back, so he could rule the world, as he said. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to rule the world! So this one, the police hire him to clean up the ninjas that are... They're doing something. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the Ronald Reagan cameo? Oh. <laughs> uh, with duct tape Cameos? Up yeah. on the ceiling. Anytime they're in an official board. building, there's a Ronald Reagan picture. Even if they couldn't find a place to put it, it's just awkwardly taped <laughs> out of the chalkboard. Which is quite amazing because this has the look of a movie that was shot, I think you guys would agree, in like 77. It, it looks like a late 60s, yeah, early 70s like movie. Like it sucked. It belongs on this panel. <laughs> but I wish Sybil I Danning had been in it. To say that, yeah, I wish Sybil Danning was in it. Um, they provide no stills of the film. Just simple Danny with a sword. So Lethal Ninja, who is neither lethal nor a ninja, but he is an army of one, according to the, the packaging here. Rich, give us a plot synopsis of Lethal Ninja. Okay. Lethal Ninja is about a crime-ridden city, and the judge, who is trying to clean the city up, takes a handwritten business card that says, Hire me, calls a guy with a perm, and the guy with the perm is going to clean up crime in the city by mildly annoying the city's criminals. He's going to run past them in a, in a comical wide shot and steal their car keys and run away. And he's going to sneak up behind them and blow away their cocaine. The kid did that. And then he's going to kill a guy with his butt by stabbing him in the butt. The little kid did that. Maybe, maybe kill the guy by stabbing him in the butt. We're not sure. I don't think he does. And, and then he's going to fight his childhood friend who he played basketball with. And then the friend's dad is going to kill one of the judge's 20 adopted children. <laughs> after slapping her during sex while thinking about his son. That's weird. And then he's going to die at the end by falling three feet three under seconds. a ceramic horse. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. That is really good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That was what happened there. Good job. Good job. Good job. That long party scene at the beginning, that, that was it for me. It, it's over. We have no ninjas. We have a plot, like you said, you're, you're, he was dead on with his assessment in, in his, you know, your opening. But the thing is though, that could have been done in like eight minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. They would, it, we would be in the party, we would then show the judge in a car going to a different location, and then it would cut back to, to the, the party. party. Yeah. I thought the movie was edited out of order yeah. at first. I was like, what is happening? Was the mayor the guy on the beanbag chair in the car? No, that's... That wasn't... That's, that's <laughs> Grandma! That's, that's, well that's, that's Grandma the Ninja Warrior! That's the guy that needed the nursing home. That is Ninja <laughs> I think we're not. I think we're not accurately describing just how incomprehensible it is. <laughs> okay, we need to clarify some things. Lethal Ninja, the man with the perm and the mullet, yep. shows up at the party in the beginning at the judge's house wearing a, a waiter's costume. He's serving food. But he's also a secret lethal ninja. Sure. The mayor's adopted son is also at the party, but he's wearing like a, like a bellhop costume, or, or or like an admiral's uniform or something. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. In the middle of the party, it cuts to them in front of like fake brick wall, where lethal ninja is now wearing a hamburger <laughs> costume. <laughs> He's training the kid in martial arts. Then it cuts back to them at the party, <laughs> and um. Lethal, I wish you were kidding. <laughs> Lethal Ninja is is back in his uh, maitre d' costume, and yeah. the kid is back Again. in the the little child's admiral uniform. <laughs> and, um, uh, that then then it cuts back later to them uh, training, and and the kid so he starts slapping the kid. In the face. <laughs> He slaps him too hard, oh, yeah. and the kid starts crying, <laughs> and, and they hug. Um, the kid was crying for a different reason. Yeah. I don't know. He slaps him so hard that the kid hugs him. But it's 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 Ringo Starr and uh, Gene Simmons' love child who right. decides to put on work safety goggles, yes. who shoots the Chinese adopted daughter of the judge. The piano player gets shot in the head. He has to yes. save the singer yes. at the yeah. Sweet Sixteen the birthday Indian party. Adopted the Indian yes. adopted yes. daughter. Yeah. 
but they all go to the funeral of the Chinese girl who gets yes. shot in the head by Gene the love Simmons. child of Gene Simmons and, and Ringo Starr, right. who decides to wear work safety goggles. Right. And oh, Dave Coulier shows up in drag to yes. commit some kind of murder. I don't know who. Yeah, who's he trying to kill? In that Millie scene? Vanilli. Because he runs up to Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli was kind of hiding, though, yeah. in that scene, though. Millie he Vanilli. shoots at yeah. Millie Vanilli. Right. Millie Vanilli tries to make amends with That's the first with, person he shoots with at, yeah. Perm Ninja. Yeah. But he gets shot in the side by Dave Coulier in drag. <laughs> He's not fooling anybody. He's not fooling no. anyone. It's the worst disguise in the world. Yeah. It's, it's and then somebody in a wheelchair rolls up and attacks Dave Coulier in press. That was Saint Elmo. That was Saint Elmo. Saint Elmo. Saint Elmo. Saint Elmo. Saint Elmo. <laughs> Saint Elmo was shot. It, let's backtrack and then we'll. It's not getting. Saint, Saint Elmo got stabbed in the buttocks with sire blades. <laughs> no, 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 no. At the pool, he was shot. Yeah. And the kid revived him by rubbing his groin. Oh, and he was no. okay. <laughs> and the paramedics. With the cooler, a beer cooler, <laughs> as the kid's rubbing his groin. It's also right around this time that Millie Vanilli, after being shot in the stomach, he just gets up. He's got an exit wound and everything, but he's just, he's oh, just, no, 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 up to his dad, and his dad just sort of smacks him around a bit because he's disappointed in him while he's like dying from a gunshot wound. You, you, you got shot. Uh. This is all within a 10 minute span. We're making this movie sound so much more exciting than I know. it is. And, and then you get to the last scene, which takes place in the dance club. But now the dance club is an auction hall. All of the valuable auction items, which came from like a dollar store and they're made out of plaster, are sitting on a folding table that's covered with a dirty tablecloth. Oh, what's, a, what's a table? Table? <laughs> table. Folding table. Okay. <laughs> the evil mayor and, and Gene Simmons wanted that piece of art because... <laughs> <laughs> Evil Mayor and Gene Simmons wanted that piece of art because it had all the drugs in it. Is that it? Really? I want <laughs> How the fuck did you get this? Yeah. No! It's in the movie, but After he fell on the thing, there's little bags of drugs all over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's why he was bidding on it? Oh, so yeah. that's why they're bidding on it. And then Evil Mayor, that's why Evil Mayor hit Gene Simmons with his cane, because Gene Simmons outbid him for it, even though it was Evil Mayor. But Mano. as he jumped to his death and committed suicide, that makes the lethal ninja eat were even more non-lethal yeah. because we don't even he get the payoff is, is you know even if we liked the hero which I don't think any of us do mm -hmm. but if we did you want that payoff of him winning at the end or doing something was good. he even there? <laughs> <laughs> they had this awkward fight <laughs> scene where they go up the steps they, they go up the steps and they make their way down the walkway and then they make their way back down the walkway the other way and then for no reason whatsoever Gene Simmons jumps off a three foot drop, lands in a ceramic horse and dies. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the end of it. His son comes up, I guess. It... <laughs> and then, but then out of nowhere, all of, all of the adopted kids come into the room. <laughs> Look at the dead body. And it's the drug dealer, Gene Simmons guy, who the kids have no relation to, but yet they're there for some oh, reason. Yeah. The kids are there. Yeah. These are the worst fucking parents ever. <laughs> ever. Look at this. He's, he's, he's dropping five feet. They already been shooting. What? <laughs> well, now's the time of the night when we choose the film, which we think is the best of the worst. Clearly, all three of these films are the worst, mm -hmm. the worstest ever. No, um, slightly maybe not the worstest there. ever. I don't, no, I'm not they sure are about that. terrible and they are bad, but They're there worse. is a good one out of the three. There is a best of the worst. We'll start with Rich. Rich, which one of the three films is the best of the worst? Okay, my, my pick is going to be slightly, slightly unusual. Slightly unusual. Uh, if I had picked, you know, not the best of the worst, but the best of the best, it would have been Ninja 3. It's, it, there's some really entertaining moments in there, some neat fight stuff, but the show is best of the worst. And the most entertainment value I had out of a movie was Lethal Ninja. That, that, that 15, 20 minute spike is so high, so high, it blew everything out of the water. No, so I'm, I'm picking um, Lethal Ninja as the best of the worst. But, because that first hour and 10 minutes is so bad, I'm also picking it as the movie we destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! My what? 
just happened? <laughs> Is this real life? <laughs> Here's where I will get passionate for a minute in my, my, my picks, I suppose. Um, I love martial arts, I've been in it my whole life. Um, and here's where we go, if I pick the best of the three, just overall, of course it's Ninja 3. It had the best production values, I hate to, obviously budget helped that movie where it failed other ones. But there was some talent there. With Ninja Warriors, why I'm not saying it's the worst, is because there was martial art talent in the film. It was not properly captured, but the talent was there. The ability to do good fight scenes was there in that movie. There's some long, we talked about, one take fight scenes that are incredibly difficult to do. So I can't say that Ninja Warriors is the worst. Well, what is your pick for the best? The best of the worst, I will go with Lethal Ninja. Whoa! I will go with Lethal Ninja. Can you Ninja. explain? I will explain. I will go with it is this. The spike in comedy, <laughs> though short, was better comedy than any of the two other films. Wow. And that's why I will pick it. All three are so bad. But that comedy <laughs> spike for that brief five minutes, maybe? It's but like that, a minute and a half. That, I, I say, it's okay, I say a minute from, and a half. From the, the spike is so on. high. Okay. From the sex scene on. I didn't, nah, see, that's not me. There was just, just the funeral sequence. I'm going to agree with Mike there, I think. And the funeral sequence, I get it. It was so incompetently done. And I'm pretty sure they were being serious about it as filmmakers. Yeah. And that's, that's fucking pathetic, dude. <laughs> it's, 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 that, that was very pathetic. Lethal Ninja's my choice of best of the worst. Uh, how to become a teenage ninja gets the axe tonight. You know, I wonder what a certain uh, person that is a fan of ninjas would think of how to become a teenage ninja. Don the Dragon Wilson? No. Well, who else could you be thinking of, Jay? I still talk to Red Letter Media sometimes. I wonder if what I'm doing is right or wrong. I've seen many things that wouldn't be believed. I have seen zombies peruse the swamps of the land, seen distaff warriors of the apocalypse, at a time even been bound by blood to the Wendigo. And now, now soon perhaps I'll know the power of blood mercury. And though I'm not quite sure what Bite of the Mummy really means, oddly enough it feels like a teardrop of destiny waiting to fall. So I give pause in thinking if what I'm doing is right or wrong. But perhaps the universe is already answered here in me. Oh my god, it's our old friend, Len Kabazinski. Oh, hi, Jay. Who put that there? Yeah. Cameron Mitchell still has not hit anything. <laughs> and he's no. fired a lot in this movie. They just gave him enough. Ah! 
Someone ah! take the gun from Cameron Mitchell. Edward Murphy's raw force is a virtual smorgasbord of over-the-top sleaze, mixing zombies, cannibals, yes. outrageous action, mm -hmm. gore, mm -hmm. copious amounts of nudity, shit dog, starring exploitation greats Cameron Mitchell and Vic <gasps> Diaz. We're gonna put two up for that and Kung Fu. Boom. Pow. Pow. Well, Len, cannibals, zombies, guns, action, boobs, Cameron Mitchell. Mm -hmm. This is like the greatest movie ever made. We're about to find out. Let's go watch it. Oh. What the? Where's my crate? Oh, okay. That wrapped that up real nicely. Rich, Rich blew his load all over Bigfoot versus <laughs> D.B. Cooper, <laughs> and boy, oh boy, is that ironic. <laughs> Rich, tell us all about D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot. Well, well, a little bit about the background first. Uh, people, a lot of people might not know who D.B. Cooper is. Yeah, yeah, D.B. Cooper I didn't, I didn't know is, is a legend. It, it's, the, it's the legend of D.B. Cooper. It's my favorite real-life unsolved mystery. In 1971, man, you know, wearing sunglasses and a nice suit with a briefcase, uh, took a seat on an American Airlines flight, hands a stewardess's note. Note says, uh, I have a bomb. And he demands that American Airlines give him $200,000, which is a lot in 1971 money, or he will blow up the plane and everyone aboard. They give in to his demands, so they, they land the plane. Uh, they give him the money he asked for, along with three parachutes and he lets everyone off the plane except for the two pilots and the stewardess then they take the plane back up and they're flying somewhere over the uh, american uh, northwest and you know so you know he puts on one of the parachutes takes the money and at just some point over the northwest he jumped out of the airplane never to be seen again and then and then cleverly here's here's the premise like this is what happened to, to db cooper he he ran into bigfoot Excellent premise for a film. Yeah. yeah. They don't do anything with that. It is, it is literally 78 minutes, because they couldn't make it to 90, of shirtless dudes uh, walking around the woods, uh, jogging around the woods, uh, taking off their pants, yeah. putting their pants back on. They do that. They do that. And then, like, hiking around with these comically tiny hunting guns. That's how they hiked. Yeah. They they're gonna hunt they're, turkeys. They're, they hike their own. Oh, f fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this amazing, Rich? It's amazing how how blatant and lazy it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah lazy is a good word for it. <laughs> Do we have a stopwatch? <laughs> can, and just a little corner at the bottom of the screen, just for the entire runtime of our episode. Yeah. Can we just have all of the, the, the guys running shots? <laughs> just keep it playing in just real time. Just keep it playing in real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just cut, cut them all together. Yeah. It's a literal runtime. <laughs> That's like awesome. That is awesome. Mike wins. Great. Congratulations, Mike. You did it. Um, well, the the, the two uh, top billed actors in the film, Eric Roberts and Lene Quigley, um, are not. Well, they're, they're, they don't physically appear in the film. They, no. they appear in the film only in voiceover. If if you could quickly cut to Lene Quigley's uh, appearance in the film. Thank you, sir. I'll read it later. They don't show Linnea Quigley in the film. She has one line off camera as a stewardess. Well, that's not her as the stewardess, obviously. She's never there on set, probably. It's Top neither belt. is uh, Eric. No, well, neither is yeah. Eric, right? I hadn't expected anyone else being up here, but they seem like a good bunch of guys, so I was happy to play along. Eric Roberts, you know, like uh, Daniel Stern got a, a top build credit in the Wonder Years because he was, you know, a main voice part of that. She has one voiceover line and is top build. Amazing, yeah. This is a scam. Well, while we were watching the film, that's one of the things we were discussing is is the purpose of it. And Len, you felt yeah. very betrayed by it. Yeah, I did. Because as Rich was saying, 
this is an awesome idea. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome to have two legends in the woods. They're going to meet and do all this. It, dude, it's, it could be, it could have been awesome. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's borderline porn because the only touching that goes on, the only erotic touching that goes on is Bigfoot caressing a buff dude's abs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There's three, there's, there's several major segments. The first one is guy walking. Yeah. The next one, which we found shocking, was one guy walks up the staircase, goes into oh, a room, right. removes his pants, and, and like play acts with a gun in the mirror. Get him. Right there, right there. Well, that's like, and, and it goes on for like 15 minutes. They, they have rented the house uh, to all spend Thanksgiving with each other, shirtless, doing turkey hunts instead of spending Thanksgiving with their families. Yeah, perfectly right. normal. Yeah, perfectly but normal. The, the, the next, the, I would say a good entire third of the movie in the middle is one guy after the other coming up the staircase, individually going to a different room in the house, mm -hmm. removing their pants, and standing in front of the mirror with a gun. Here it is. All right, here it is. Moment of truth. Come on, be done. Be done, be done, be done. Rule of threes, rule of threes, rule of threes. Rules apply in our real world. No! <laughs> no! No! This one can't even take his shirt off. It's already gone. Uh, but shit. the pants are coming off. It's about the, the pants. pants. <laughs> Come on! The laziness of the filmmaking needs to be pointed out and, and stressed. The, the shots of D.B. Cooper on the plane were just him against a white wall. Yeah, he was in an office or something somewhere. And the the who somebody I don't know if it was David Dakota himself actually took a plane ride and kind of quickly filmed with their camera yeah and then and then used oh, that yeah, yeah. that I th that kind of shit the the modern day in 1971 like the guys are running in like clearly right, modern right, clearly shoes, shoes and shoes. that is the least of the problems here oh, oh my god oh my god oh shit the blades aren't moving and then <laughs> the blades aren't moving <laughs> what is this shot I'm not point out mistakes, oh, film guy, oh, but yeah. Well, well, it's now it's a cargo plate? I, 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 yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I don't... Well, that was the worst film I've ever seen. You always say that? I think it's finally true. Yeah. I think yeah. This, is, this is the worst film we have ever done. Ever. Because it's barely a film. It's arguable if it actually is a film. For, for once, this is not Mike Stoklasa hyperbole. This is the... Worst, worst thing yeah. film we have seen. ever watched. This, this is the first time I have ever sat down with some dudes and watched a gay porno, and it was <laughs> it was very uncomfortable. Wait, wasn't there that time that the guy invited you into his bedroom to show you his Wendy's ad? Where's the beef? <laughs> and he said, show me the beef. I hate you so much. Remember? And he closed the door he behind you. you I, I hate Warhammer you figure. so much. His Warhammer figure, his singular. Black... Cougar. Jack. Hold, hold on. I gotta interrupt for one second, please. I'm talking to you too, um, Jay. Yeah. Black Cougar has a theme song. We're all friends. Give it to me straight. Is it better than Curse no, of the no, Wolf? No, no, no. 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 Don't. We, don't. We were so no. hyped. Because your fans are going to think you're kissing my butt about no. something. We were, no, we were give it to me straight. extremely hyped about Curse of the Wolf. Before we met you, we did that episode and we talked about Curse of the Wolf. We talked about that theme song that is in my head forever. Curse of the Wolf. So Black Cougar, because I think Black Cougar is awesome. It is. It's not better than Curse of the Wolf. No. I'll say this. Okay. I can I can hear the Curse of the Wolf theme in my head. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the, the Black Cougar okay. theme. Yeah. And I just watched it. You see, you do have feelings, and you do have a heart. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Oh, he's wiping away his non-existent he tears. It's not right. It was a close-up. We talk about Black Cougar being created by this old, his grandpa or whatever in his laboratory that's like through the cartoon of Spider-Man and his amazing friends where they flip the switch and all the stuff flips around and stuff like that. Oh. If you follow me. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah! Wait. 
No one saw that coming. No. no. This is a secret. Wait, map. where's the passage? It's gonna do the walls. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yes! Yes! Oh, oh my god. That is fucking awesome. Yes! Right, dude. That's, That's exactly. awesome. Welcome to my secret stainless steel kitchen. Right? Right? Is it not right, though? I believe it is. I, I can barely remember that shit. He had a yeah. trophy or something, I think, in the cartoon, and he twists the trophy or turns it or something in it. <laughs> They were all set for the Black Cougar toy line. They thought this was going to be a thing. This this movie also you, functions as an advertisement. You really believe that? You believe that this these filmmakers I, thought this was going to yeah, be? Yeah. I don't think that's a practical thing to believe. But I can believe that the person who made this may be deluded enough to have thought that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Black Cougar superhero for children. Kids from four to seven all over the world will think Black Cougar because he's the only superhero that does what? Pop! Protects children! This guy. Uh, Salvador. Silvio. Dis Don't mess with Mr. Blues. Don't mess with D-double-O-Z. De Salvatore. That's gotta be that asshole. Uh. The backstory to me is more interesting than the film. Yeah. Black Cougar has one goal, and that goal is to protect children. All right, Black Cougar. He looks like the guy from Spinal Tap, Christopher Guest. Yeah. From Spinal Tap, or the singer so you're saying of Iron Maiden. People with long hair are freaks. Well, what I'm going to do? <laughs> fuck, fuck this. Use your microphone. There's something wrong with them. People with long hair. That hair gets in the way. Fuck you guys. That's I'm gonna go get another drink here. That's <laughs> the set. We tore his movie Skull Forest like a fucking new one, yeah. and 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 ripped on him for like a solid hour, yeah. and yet talking about his hair is what did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what crossed the line. Everybody's got an idea here. There, how do you raise the money? Go. Bake sale. Okay. Uh, privately financed by himself because he was like an attorney. I, I think he, he built local businesses and neighborhood associations. So this guy was charismatic enough to rally a whole bunch of people. A whole community, yeah. A whole community to this concept of a superhero that saves children yeah. and we're gonna have a toy line, we're gonna make uh, 10 million dollars from this idea and everybody lost their money. <laughs> The, the weird thing is that his website is still up, uh, blackcougar.com. I spent hours on blackcougar.com. I, I, I'm looking for like the documentary on making of Black Cougar. And you did not find I, that. I mean, like I searched, just, I need a new credit card. It was, a guy, it was a guy with an idea that was well beyond his grasp. Black Cougar is here! How's my eyes? How's my hair? <laughs> Len Kabazinski from KillerWolfFilms.com dot com creator of such hit films as Swamp Zombies, Curse, Curse of the Wolf, Wolf Ninja, Wolf. Prophecy of Death, oh, Fist of the Vampire. Fist of the Vampire. Now, Jay, you haven't listed that's your favorite movie. Fist of the Vampire. Apocalypse of the Female Warrior. That's vampires. Close. It's, it's, it's a bunch of other shit. <laughs> Len, <laughs> tell us all about Wolf. Okay. Raw Force, and uh, for the viewers, I've seen Raw Force. Mike, you made and Space you know. Cop. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of other shit. Hey, Space Cop is the number one film in Uganda. Wisconsin <laughs> is famous for snow and the Space Cops. Wow. No, I know, which guy? Space Cop is the best yeah, movie ever made. <laughs> It is so fantastic. Everyone in the world knows that movie. So Raw Force, I had seen before you guys. I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. I'll briefly explain it. There are cannibals in it, cannibal monks, naked women, a lot of naked women, including a really wild cameo by uh, Camille Keaton from My Spit on Your Grave. And an earlier film appearance from Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is in it. That blonde woman you mentioned a bunch of times, the... Um, uh, Amy Schumer? No, Schumer, the other one. Amy Poehler? That's the one. Yeah. None of these are the actual people that talk no, about. No, no. Do you listen to me, madam? 
They're wrecking my ship. You shut up. My Cameron Mitchell. We miss you, Cameron, so much. No, not only Cameron Mitchell, because we we've seen Cameron a lot. On I miss show. Cameron well, a lot. We've we've recently debuted the Cameron Mitchell graph, uh, charting the ups and downs of and, Cameron Mitchell. And with you saying that, Rich, uh, it's good you said that because this is before Kill Point. This is before the Cameron we love. This is before lawn chair sunglasses, Cameron Mitchell, and it's right before it. This is like 1982, I believe. I'm not going to look on. I, Let's just say it's 1982, Raw Force. Well, how, how do we how do we rank Cameron Mitchell's performance? Uh, he moves. Yes. It, it's yes. up there. It's up there. He, he walks. <laughs> he holds a fire hose. He can't hit anything with a gun. <laughs> He's in the whole movie. This isn't a two-day on-set Cameron right, Mitchell. Right. Here's X amount of thousand dollars to come up for two days or whatever. He's in the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Team teamed up with Mrs. Roper. Mrs. Roper, right. From Three's Company. Mm -hmm. And there were several times we had thought Mrs. Roper was gonna go topless. I mean she was <laughs> Why not? Why she, not? Was, she was falling out of literally the everyone else was topless. Oh, oh that's nice. Things, uh... We got to the end of this movie. We got to like, like the main villain had just died, and I'm, I was like, is this movie ending? Because it felt like we'd only been watching it for like 30 minutes. And that's great pacing. But instead, yeah. we're like, we're right at the end. Yeah. yeah. So he moved every every minute every of the minute. film. Where it was yeah. something new. And if the plot wasn't moving, we'd see boobs and bush. Now we're at a whorehouse. Now we're at a boat. Now we're at a weird, wild sex party on a boat. Now, <laughs> now pirates are invading, and a guy with a Nazi hat is trying to rape a woman who is turned on by weird things. He's trying to rape. And now the boats blew up, and we're on an island. And now the island has cannibal monks. Now we're being chased by zombie Oh, ninjas. don't forget the island has prostitutes. <laughs> nudity, nudity, nudity. Well, so what force is Citizen King compared to? So drunk right now. It's the difference between I can an hear exploitation you, you little film. Shit. <laughs> can, can we just take a moment to mention the weird bearded baby bartender? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that guy. Proto hipster? <laughs> oh. oh my god! Oh. Sure, coming right up. That was an unfortunate looking person. Whoa! <laughs> Not off the carpet! He looks like Bozo, but just just paler. Yeah. It's a wonderful. I mean, it's not the best like like bad B movie it's I've ever seen. It's not without his problems, right? But it, it. I mean, it's too competent to be like a really good bad B movie. But it's wonderful to see like a like a like a sloppy 1970s sleazy movie blown up to Blu-ray quality. From a film print, when I'm used to watching movies that that are like this on a terrible VHS tape yes. from 1980 something, tracking, it, it's great, it's it's glorious, and I don't know who released this. They um, are good people. Syndrome. They are. Yeah. No, it's it's cheesy, but you are never laughing at it. No, no, no. You, you go, you're along for the ride. It's it's great. It's actually really sad. Like the the whole movie centers around the Burbank Kung Fu Club, and Correct. while those yeah. guys can kick and punch. They never do anything as exciting as Short Round. Does. I want the t-shirt. There has got to be. Like the, Dragon the, Sound, which I have, yeah. Yeah. there has got to be Burbank Kung Fu Club. And Burbank I want Kung it. Fu Club. Somebody send I'm, it to me. It's on Redbubble, I'm sure. Got to be. The, uh, Hitler's sidekick, guy with band-aids on his face, <laughs> is under the false impression that Hitler is selling the Asian <laughs> prostitutes for jade so that they could be raped by the monks. Yes. But he doesn't know that they're literally being barbecued and eaten by the monks. And at I some point, he seems to have a change of heart. They're not buying the girls for sex. Then why are they buying them? For food. Are you serious? Yeah, he seems to be uncomfortable with that. And then it's so, and then Hitler says, I'm going to up your... your 15%. Yeah, to 15%. And then... Okay. Never again do we hear that. Because they don't do character arcs. They just things just happen. <laughs> Set up payoffs. <laughs> well, let's talk about 
Well, let's talk about the films we watched tonight. And it's time to... Uh, and it's time to pick Best of the Worst. Rich Evans. Your, your pick between Raw Force <laughs> and, and Black Cougar. Because I know you don't like D.B. Cooper. <laughs> oh, man. I... You know, I, I respect Black Cougar for its creativity and its weird, like, toy action scenes, but Raw Force is just too legitimately entertaining. I have to give it to Raw Force. Len, your pick for Best of the uh, Worst. Th this is a landslide victory for me. Raw Force is, it's not even, this is the biggest landslide <laughs> vote I could ever give on a Best of the Worst program. It's an obvious answer. I'm just saying I feel bad for Black Cougar that it's, it's up against Raw Force. <laughs> this is manipulation. This, this is someone taking advantage of a genre. Okay. Taking okay. advantage of a local right. community force. Raw Force is an exploitation film, but the film is in bold. That, that's a real movie. It keeps moving. Exactly. Yeah. Raw, Raw Force is the best of the worst. Mike? When you say exploitation film, though, I'm, I'm leaning towards D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot because... You're going to do that. The, the, the the young men in the film I can't believe this thought they were making a real movie and that all they did was get get a photo. I mean, no. Other than those guys, everyone knew what was going on. <laughs> but but these two films <laughs> uh, Yeah. I I have to give it to Raw Force. It's pure. It's pure in its sleaze. So at the end of the day, this is sleazy, but at least it's honest. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That, yes, raw yes. force wins. <laughs> <Hands down. laughs>